This Use a Play is brought to you by. You got an upgrade for Christmas. If you're feeling lucky, you could win some money. An upgrade for Christmas. $200,000 in cash and prizes. With Lime, you could win some money. Upgrade. It's Lime's Christmas Lottery. 250 winners this Christmas, oh yeah. Sign up for upgrades to super fast broadband, Lime TV, e billing, a data plan, top up $15. Purchase a handset or text 4263 to enter. Welcome to the Barbados Today afternoon update. It's December 24th, Christmas Eve. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. The country's head of state calls on Barbadians to be patient as the government tries to turn around the economy. In his message, Governor General Elliot Belgrave says the Friendly Stewart administration and its agencies have been striving valiantly to address the financial situation for some time now. Sir Elliot is confident that the situation can be solved, but he says everyone must work together to make it happen. He believes the combined efforts of all sectors of the community can create the climate to grow the economy. He also urged nationals to help the less fortunate during this time of year and beyond. Meantime, in his Christmas message, Prime Minister Frandis Stewart urged citizens to remember the reason for the season, despite the challenges. He said the passing of time has not lessened the importance of the event which took place in the manger at Bethlehem 2,000 years ago, and the hope which the birth of Christ brought to the world is still available to sustain the country as it confronts the many challenges of life from day to day. Also sending Christmas wishes is opposition leader Mia Motley, and she urged nationalists to live up to the Barbadian spirit of sharing and caring, especially during this time. As Barbadians, we must return once more to that spirit of community that guided our lives in days gone by. We can no longer depend on a broken government to look out for the weak among us. We will have to help those with whom we share this still beautiful and peaceful land. We must not prey on the weak or less fortunate. We must build them up, for in so doing we will build up our communities and ourselves. We must lose the desire for material things in preference to spending time with our children, with our family, with our elders and with our neighbours. In other news now, General Secretary of the Barbados Workers' Union, Tony Moore, is hoping that new Employment Rights Tribunal will be up and running in the next few weeks. Stakeholders have been choosing new representatives for the panel after eight of the nine member boards suddenly resigned last week. Once government keeps true, and the Minister of Labor in particular, to addressing some of the challenges that led to the disaffection in the first place, and we see the majority of those who were already listed as members returning to the tribunal, as is our information, informal of course, then we should have every confidence that the tribunal could be able to begin its work in the next few weeks. A 35-year-old St. Michael man was appearing in court today to answer drug charges. Mark Anthony Blagrove of Clarks Avenue, Bayville, will answer to charges of possession, possession with intent to supply, trafficking and importation of 24 pounds of cannabis. The drugs were found last Friday in a personal shipment of animal feed from overseas at an import business in Bridgetown. Blagrove appeared in the District A Magistrates Court. Meantime, the missing elderly man from St. Philip has been located. Police say 75-year-old Rupert Hoyt of St. Catherine, New Road, is safely back home. It is regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I'm Red Plastic Bag. Anyone who knows me knows I don't like cold. Sunshine rains in my country. I love it. Sun power. In sports now, West Indies batsman Shiv Shandapal says he is confident in his team's ability to bounce back against South Africa in the second test match at St. George's Park in Port Elizabeth starting this Friday. 
West Indies suffered the heaviest ever defeat in South Africa when they were humiliated by an innings and 220 runs 70 minutes before lunch on the penultimate day of the opening test last Saturday. But Chandra Paul believes the West Indies have players who can step up and beat their opponents. The 40-year-old cricketer is hoping that the opening defeat would have a positive effect on the players and said the Windies are even more determined to take the fight to the home side. We turn to St. Lucia now where a former independent senator is calling for the president of the Civil Service Association, Mary Isaac, to step down. Everistus Jean-Marie believes that Isaac's role as an opposition United Workers' Party senator conflicts with a role as the head of one of the country's strongest unions. More in this report from HDS News Force. Mary Isaac has set a bad precedent which needs to be corrected. So says former independent senator versus Jamari. He says pressure should be put on Isaac to step down as CSA president, not just by her members, but by members of the public. He says there is a clear conflict of interest. Given that Isaac is the head of a public sector union and is now a member of a political party and an opposition senator. She's making a very public political statement and it is this that she has joined the fight to remove the incumbent government from office and there is nothing wrong with that because it's her constitutional right the problem is when she sits as president of the CSA negotiating with the employers of CSA members which is the government of St. Lucia which agenda is she serving? Shamari is also critical of the decision by the United Workers' Party to even make such an offer to a sitting president of a public sector union. He says they have demonstrated an absence of appreciation of good governance. Internationally now, a heartbreaking Christmas for people in southern Mississippi as a tornado system rips through the country, killing four people, injuring dozens more, and causing widespread destruction. Massive and deadly tornadoes ripping through the southeast as bad weather complicates holiday travel for millions. The National Weather Service flashing tornado warnings a tornado warning has been issued at 45 across TV screens in five states. Parts of Mississippi now in a state of emergency after a tornado touched down 90 miles south of Jackson, killing at least four people. Down trees and power lines blocking traffic on a main thoroughfare, roofs of businesses, and the wall of this warehouse blown right off. One resident pulling a dog to safety from a destroyed home. Meanwhile, heartbroken store owners embrace outside their demolished flower shop. The storm system knocking out power to over 6,000 residents in Mississippi alone. Inside this heavily damaged daycare center, a holiday miracle. 35 children and seven staffers race for safety after the powerful tornado ripped the roof clear off. That's our afternoon update, but you can join us again this evening. Until then, remember to log on to www.barbadistoday.bb, subscribe to our e-paper and email updates, or like us on Facebook. You can also catch us on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, or screen plate supermarkets and gas stations near you. Also tune into Channel 101 on Lime TV to get all the latest news and sports. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Do continue to enjoy your Christmas Eve. This news update is brought to you by I won for me to me. For me? Uh -uh. You don't need speakers, right? Upgrade to win every week with Lime. Sign up for Lime TV or broadband or purchase an iPhone 6 or Samsung Note 4. Upgrade Christmas with Lime.